The following clip comes from a lesson in the Audio University course, Mixing Essentials. For more details about accessing the full course, and for more details about the tools used in this clip, check out the links below the video. So one of the things that I try to do up front is set up a couple of master pathways for my session and think about how I'm going to sum everything together and, and what it's going to look like when the track really does come together. And one of the practices that I like to employ is the utilization of submaster faders. And I'm going to create them now so that you'll see what that looks like. One of them is going to be called uh, music. And then we're going to do another stereo aux track and I'm going to call it Vox. And then I'm going to create another track and this is going to be my master for my session. So make that stereo master fader. And I'm just going to hit create. Okay, so all the way to the right of my session, I always put my submasters all the way to the right. That way they're easy to find. Uh, I know where they are. And the real trick here is in the routing. So in my I.O. setup, I am going to create a routing path for these through the via the buses in Pro Tools. So uh, I'm going to just take a, start by taking everything here and um, renaming it. So uh, let's see, bus one two. Uh, well, you know what? Let's do this. Let's create bus twenty one twenty two is going to be my music sub. And then uh, bus 23, 24, I'm going to rename my Vox sub. I'll click OK. And uh, I'm going to set those as inputs here to these tracks respectively. So the music uh, aux will now receive the music sub input, and the Vox will receive the Vox sub input. Now, uh, these will both feed the output, um, which are, are going to be on my master fader. And uh, what I'm going to do is take all of the elements in my mix and set their outputs to zero or, or nothing. Um, and the reason I'm going to do that um, is uh, because I, I, instead of soloing things and bringing them up, I want to assign them as I need them. It's sort of like working with a, uh, uh, in what I would call an additive path where we're taking a sound and we're adding to that path, and then we'll take the next sound and add to that and add to that and add to that and add to that. Uh, I find it to be confusing if I'm working with solos and mutes all the time. Um, if I uh, decide I don't like a track when I'm first working with it, I'll just make it inactive or maybe even delete it altogether from my session. I try to work as lean as I possibly can so that my sessions don't have a lot of elements in them. I find that sessions can get unwieldy if there's a lot of data living in the session. That can include automation, that can include effects that aren't being used or they're being processed but we don't hear them. Uh, it also can just be track count itself. Uh, it'll bog down your CPU if it's constantly having to chew through those numbers if we're not really even listening to them. It's just wasted effort, wasted energy. Okay, so now that I have that set up, I can start to set up the instruments that I want to work on first. But to do that, I'm going to simplify my view. So I'm going to get rid of all of the tracks here except for my masters. That's where I'm going to start. And on my master, uh, I want to put a couple of plugins that I just like to have around. One of them is called Adapter Audio Streamliner. Uh, it's made by Adapter. It's available through Plugin Alliance. And what this does is it just keeps an eye on the levels in LUFS, and it, it simulates what it might sound like if I put my mix through Apple Music or Tidal or YouTube. Deezer, Bandcamp, etc. Uh, this is just a way for me to keep an eye on levels later if I need to and see where I'm at. Uh, the other uh, plugin that I actually rely on even more while I'm mixing is uh, SPL Hawkeye. This is a ballistics uh, measurement plugin that uh, measures a lot of different things for me my overall levels, my true peaks, and my LUFS targets. Uh, my DC offsets, uh, phase correlation, and it gives me a frequency analyzer that I can look at if I get stuck. Now, I don't always have these on. They're just there in case I need them, and I put them on the master uh, so that when I solo a sound, I can pull this up and also look at it. So I'm ready to get going. Before I do, I want to show you one last thing. I want to make sure I save what I've just set up, and this 
you know, you'd be surprised how much of mixing is actually in file management. Um, I have a way of doing my mixes where um, I put a tag at the end of my sessions uh, so that if I have a name and then I save that session, I always save it with the following numbers, the year, followed by the month, followed by the day, and then I put a decimal point in an iteration. And here's the reason why. Uh, today is, let's see, today is November 6th. So um, this would be 241106, and this is the first time I'm saving the session, so it's point 0.1. The reason I do this, and uh, we can see this in the breakout window here, um, you can see that the most recent mix and the most recent date always filters down to the bottom uh, when I do this because the way the, uh, the finder sorts things is alphanumerically. So if I put the, th the numbers that stay the same, like the year and the month, uh, first, they'll stay static. Then we'll be going by the day. So if I do this today, it'll be the 6th. That'll show up below uh, 1030.1, right? And then if I saved again today, um, I can add another iteration at the end of this, 0.1 for the first time I save, 0.2 for the second time I save, etc., etc. This allows me to go back to previous iterations of my mix and change things as I go. And you can see here, I can even leave myself notes in the name, like uh, this was, I was mixing up to the guitars, and this was including the guitars, uh, and this is when I first created the session. Uh, so as I save, I'm able to now go back in time just by opening up previous mixes. And sometimes you find that you mix yourself into a box and you need to come out of that box. And it's good to have a way to find breadcrumbs to where you were. So if I want to go back and look at how I started the mix and start all over again, I don't have to go back to the all the way to the beginning. I can start maybe from when I was done with the drums. Um, or if I knew I did some really wacky thing on the guitars that I want to undo today, I can go back to the point where I put that wacky thing on the guitars, if I've made a note of it in my save files, and then work from there. The session files for Pro Tools are very small, so in Pro Tools it's, it's really an easy way to uh, keep track of your work as you go. If uh, you save uh, in a program like Logic or another that creates new session files that include all the media in it every time you save, that could get unwieldy. So uh, you might try to just make sure you're saving the name of the session as something different and uh, see what you can do about data management. Um, again, I'm just showing you what, what I do in Pro Tools. I find this to be really important, especially when you're working with clients. Uh, who want you to go back and maybe make some revisions, it's good to leave breadcrumbs for yourself.